Recording in progress. Hey, bow. Welcome to Water Cooler. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. You know how the show goes. I, Chris Socks, I'm on a kick it with my Corolla Digital Buds of yesteryear. With me today, all the way in Long Beach, CA, just like me, it's Mr. Kalen Bean. Going on. Hi, Kalen. Hey, Chris. Did you get a haircut? I did. Look, It looks good. It looks very good. Um, how many people have complimented you on the haircut be before me? Uh, that would be three people three. before you. That's so it. get yeah. in, yeah. Um, all right, Can you top. give us names? Who so are the, top, who are the three? It doesn't matter. I'm top four. No, no. Well, well, uh, who were the three before Chris? Matt, I would I say their names are... You yet. Nobody's Katie, gonna know. Amy, Nobody's gonna know. And Isla and Blake had nothing to say, which is uh, Gary. Annoying. This is <laughs> some fucking bullshit. Right, I don't know. We're done with this. No, 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 no. Hard stop. Chris is Chris is not in the top five. I'm top what? four. I'm top four. No way, bro. <laughs> Both complimented. Uh, that's 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 yeah. That's all the three though, that I remember yeah. so oh far today. So. Right, and then me. Fuck and then me. <laughs> it's on record. It's on record. You are no longer big haircut. <laughs> I hereby rescind my compliment if you're not going to acknowledge it. You and gave then, me a compliment? I called yeah. you Big Haircut. That's not a compliment. I don't know what it is. And then all the way in North Hollywood, California, it's Mr. Mike Dawson. This is fun already. Isn't it? I'm happy to be here. I missed you guys last week. Uh, we missed you too, buddy. <laughs> and I liked your, your – uh, I'm looking at your screen right now or my screen mm -hmm. of you, and oh, I'm seeing yeah. some exposed beams. Yes. Somebody, somebody yes, the idea modern. there – is all of those rafters are going to slowly be replaced by two beams, just two beams going across. Who needs structural elements in their home? Not Dawson. Uh, they're actually not structural. <laughs> uh, they're I, actually not structural. I, they're just to hang drywall. It's your garage. Yeah. The uh, the um, exposed beams look is nice, <clears> but <throat> I always worry like, is it going to get cold in there? Because the insulation is not part of it. Well, ah. cold is not cold is not the issue. Heat is the main oh, issue. Oh, it's going to get very hot as well. Um, yeah. And we're going to do radiant barrier, and then we're going to drywall beneath the radiant barrier. And so it's still going to be – it'll be a nice uh, A-shaped ceiling, vaulted ceiling, with uh, probably just two beams going across. Well – I'm glad I'm glad you're in that mode because I do have a home repair question that I'm going to post to all of you in a little that bit. I will not have the answer to. But no, it's easy. It's we'll easy. all try. You will. And then all the way in Orange County, California, it's Gary Smith. It is but by the grace of God that I did not drive into oncoming traffic listening to that dog shit that I what? missed. What the Patreon one or the regular one? I mean, we did two of them. No, the regular <laughs> one. Was great, the Patreon one. <laughs> Where we spend 45 minutes talking about my least favorite subject, only to throw to Matt, who decides to eat popcorn live on the air. I Wasn't just, great? I, I mean, we we literally, we got to the Shea Fondelay theme song, and I was like, sweet relief. And <laughs> I think that might have been worse. I what? loved it. I That was great. I disagree. Best episode ever. Time. Hold on. You get fleeced for fucking a, a scam price on popcorn and then eat it on the air, and you think that's good pod? I, I thought it was, that was one of the hardest I've ever laughed on this. That was show. one of my favorite shows I've ever. See, Dawson to. loved it. I listened, Gary, I listened to three Dawson times. gets it. Dawson hold gets it. Hold on a second, Dawson. What'd they talk about? <laughs> for Popcorn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. Oh, he's, 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 he's not wrong. wrong. He's not wrong. I was mad. I was with you the whole listened. time. I was yeah. like, man, hey, Dawson, you ridiculous. Get, you gotta get a popcorn dealer if you had a popcorn dealer. Twenty-five dollars, dude. Right, dude. You spent good. And that's hard-earned money, dude. It is. Twenty-five dollars. That popcorn should come with some weed. Dawson passed. Dawson passed the test. And then, lastly, Great. I'm still introducing everybody. You know, um, we got distracted by big haircut. All the way from Camp Crystal Lake, mm. Mr. Matt Fondelier. Hey, brother. Hi, Matt. Are you going to wear Thank a Chris. Halloween shirt every day this month? Well, certainly every water cooler this month. Oh, I, love I don't it. think I have enough. I don't have enough to, to last uh, each individual day. Camp Crystal I'm Lake. I'm actually surprised by that. Yeah. <laughs> home, home of, it's either Jason or Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. This is your test, Chris. Is Kalen telling the truth? I don't know. He's a, he. Um, it's Jason. Although, 
Is that your final answer? I think he fought Freddy Krueger there. You know, we can talk about horror movies if you want to. If you guys want to. We can, <laughs> yeah, we, we should like dedicate a whole show That'd be to fun. it. fun. Yeah. Um, but anyway, good to see you, Matt. It's good to be back. Hot off of Austin City Limits. That's right. What happened? I saw you post a, a picture online of Leon Bridges, but not the not the angle that I'm used to seeing. This is Leon Bridges' butt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Can I ask a question before we get into this story? Because I'm, I'm very in- interested in hearing about it. But how do we feel about Matt using the I didn't have this on my bingo card fucked out you know, idiom? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It is a little left out. I, I mean, it was just it was such a cool tweet until I got to that part. And then I was like, oh, damn. Gary if you coming in with all the hot takes, if you want to update I'm it, bring in. Yeah, think about what you want to update it, change it to. Last uh, week. Change it to Kino. Nobody, nobody talks about their Kino card. There you That's go, true. Chris. Now you're. Do you have a Kino card? I yes. I don't even know what a Kino card is. It's numbers. See? That's why. You pick numbers in Kino, I believe. Or how about it? You know. Yeah, I think there's numbers. I think there's. Oh so, yeah, it still works. There's numbers in Bingo. Yeah. So you can still, you know, you can replace it with Kino, but I don't know, man. I don't think it makes it better. I think it makes it worse. <laughs> And why See, haven't Matt, we combined done, the two to make Kino? Didn't expect to draw those cards in my poker hand. Uno. See, Matt, I think Uno. you need to personalize it. Like, I didn't have that on my uh, Philly's best punch card. Oh. Yeah, yeah but that's a, that's a that's, different thing. That's audience. real local. It's no, I just say, local. just say, dude, since you said that, I get a free Jamba Juice. <laughs> there you go. Somewhere I've never seen Matt go for a thousand. <laughs> yeah, Matt was really excited oh, when he started free Jamba Juice there. So All right, Matt, let me tell you, yeah, happened? I got to tell you, this is a very bizarre series of events. So for my birthday, my wife got us tickets for the uh, Saturday of week two of ACL. Austin City Limits. This is a festival, music festival in Austin. Music festival. It's like Coachella, but in Austin. Like Coachella is week one and week two, the exact same lineup. That's correct. So Rihanna okay. didn't want to be on this show either. Um, so I was like aware that this was coming down the line. It was held on my calendar for, for quite a while. And, uh, by some miracle, I have recently started a new gig that I'll be totally honest. I can't really talk too much about, but it is incredibly exciting, like life changing, surreal kind of opportunity. Um, it's still early days, but it does involve travel. And I was told that week two of ACL was a week that I would be traveling and it's a big week and I can't not be there. So for the last like month, I have been scrambling, trying to see if I could trade my week two tickets for week one. And let me tell you, you have not dealt with the worst people in society until you have tried to deal with ticket exchange in like Facebook groups and <laughs> people who are like claiming to have tickets. It, it There are so many fucking scammers. It It is like, anyway. You probably didn't have that in your Uno deck, huh? Dealing with scammers. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was getting a pretty uh, desperate about the idea that, I don't know, we're probably just going to have to sell these tickets. I really don't know what I'm going to do. And then I found out that this, gig that I'm working this production gig is going to be at ACL week one so now I'm realizing well holy shit I actually am going to get to go to ACL my wife is not going to be able to go with me but she was able to find a friend so she and a friend are now going to go this upcoming weekend while I'm out of town but in the meantime I got to uh, work basically it was backstage for three days And I spent a majority of that time backstage, but there were a few moments of complete surreal moments. For example, being on stage with Leon Bridges and kind of like filming his entrance on stage and standing on stage like the only thing I could describe was like, it was like straight out of a movie, like just behind the, you know, the little metal stands and stuff. But I took a couple pictures, including one that I posted, which uh, you guys have been making fun of since then, but a pretty like 
incredible point of view of just being on stage and just really feeling the wallop of that crowd. And then at the end of each night, uh, got to see a little bit of the closing act. So we got to see a little bit of Blink-182, um, got to see a little bit of Dua Lipa, and then Sturgill Simpson on, uh, on Sunday. But basically, we wanted to kind of duck out pretty early, not stay to the very end, just because there are such insane crowds there and we kind of knew we were going to be back there the next day for each of those days so anyway it was uh it was a pretty fucking amazing experience all all set fantastic yep. and i and i got paid to be there i got paid to be at acl it was amazing Ooh, great yeah love it man well congrats and i'm glad you had a good time. thank you yeah that, that rules man i'm, I'm happy because uh it's, it's probably a little bit different than watching on your couch uh oh yeah version, for sure right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, there was a great moment where on uh, on Saturday, Dua Lipa was the closer, and one of the guys that was with us, really nice guy, were, were finally kind of like off for the day. We're like, I want to go watch some Dua Lipa, and he said, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like these dudes' music. And <laughs> I said, the fact that you just said these dudes just tells me you have absolutely no idea, but you know, I just said she's like, she's like a hot chick, and her music is just like fun dance pop music. And he took a beat and he looked at me and he went, I like Slipknot. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, right. Man, buckle not, up. Buckle like up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we watched the show for like 20 minutes. And I was like, we should get back to the parking lot. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, uh, yeah. That's all right. He can like both. Yeah, he didn't he like both. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah. Um, well, I f- how, I'm, nine I'm out of 10 heard of Slipknot Lee, fans do not like. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. think there's much of a crossover. Yeah. And the other one hates her. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone hates Dua Lipa? No, he said nine out of ten Slipknot fans, and I said oh, it in the yeah. t- hates her. <laughs> yeah. um, well, anyway, I'm glad you had a good time, dude. It sounds like a thank a you, fun, thank you, a fun, uh, fun show. And uh, yeah, congrats on the gig too, man. Yeah, I will. I'll keep you guys updated when it I is can totally like, different. Talk about every, it a bit more. Every yeah. music festival that I've seen in the last ten years, I've seen from backstage. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't. I didn't. I never realized really how many people are backstage, kind of putting on an event like that. Like it really is a city's worth of people. There's somewhere between five and ten thousand people, and that's not that's not unrealistic. Like it's absolutely insane. Just like buzzing around on golf carts. Every single artist has a giant set of teamsters that work with them like it's it 10, was thousand is an awfully big number though all right well let's say five thousand five hundred it, it was no no it was absolutely in the thousands that what happens. i what i experienced think sure. like think like avo fest Dawson. right yeah. <laughs> yeah that's thousands yeah that's right um well i actually went to a, a concert on saturday saturday much smaller just uh but it was so loud that i had to go to the bar and ask for earplugs and that's when i realized i am no longer cool i don't wow. know like <laughs> i had to go to the bar order a drink and I, just, and I was like do you also have earplugs and he gave me some and i was the only one there who didn't have tonight it's at the end of the night so wow i would have been like i don't know how to make that cocktail you can't possibly be asking me for styrofoam <laughs> things to plug into your ears you old fart i uh, know i know I've, I've i've reached i've reached a, a new point I had I had a uh, got a text from Eddie Trunk yesterday. Any interest in going to see Rival Sons at the Wiltern? And I'm like, fuck yes, Gotta dude. Go. He's amazing. like, all right, I'll I'll hit you with details. I'm like, okay, sweet. And then my mom got sick, and my mom is calling me, and I'm talking to my mom, and I'm like, I'm realizing my mom is totally fucking sick, and I can't say to her, hey mom, I'm gonna be out of cell phone range because mm-hmm. I'm going to go see a rock band at the Wiltern right now. And I just called Eddie and I'm like, dude, I got it. I, I have to fucking pass. My mom is going to be calling me all night and I can't fucking miss her call. I need to fucking do family shit. And he's like, no worries, dude. I'll, I'll keep asking. Dang. But rival sons, Amazing. you guys, you guys have heard rival sons and you Love don't them. know it. You don't, you have, and you don't know it. About six to eight months ago, when they had the Chevy truck commercials and there was this raucous rock and roll in the background, that's Rival Sons. So if you remember, if you can remember that 
Chevy commercial from six to eight months ago. Oh, that You've Chevy commercial. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, the one with rock music. Right, yeah. That was the best one. Yeah. Right. right. Why didn't your brother help? Does your mom have rival sons? Brothers in tickets. Brothers in Texas, man. Uh, okay. He was partying with Matt. <laughs> Brothers with Matt. Yeah, no, two hours ahead. So, and, uh, you know, yeah. so he's in bed. But oh. I was, I was, and now hearing you guys talk about rock shows, I'm like, fuck, dude, rival sons, man. Mm-hmm. Whatever. No, I just, I just want to open up a pit, you know, start, start moshing. Um, right. Yeah. So I have a, I have a little bit of a conundrum that just uh, posed itself onto, onto me today. Um, two of my appliances have broken in my kitchen. Mm, and, which one? Oh, no. Toaster. We're all named Toaster's after one. appliances. So. We are. Can you we buy are. a new one and put them together? Um, <laughs> that mean if I could buy a two in one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have those these days for a lot of. Yeah, no, appliances. they have a, a dishwasher, air fryer combo unit. That's yeah. I w- oh, I, I could use half of that. So, it, within 24 hours, my dishwasher yeah. and my ice maker have broken. The ice maker in your uh, in fridge? My, yeah, my freezer. Yeah, that's the, dead. It's dead. You're done with that. I've rewired it a few times, but I thought I did a pretty good job with it this time. That I don't want to have to open it back up and look again, but I might. I might have to. Yeah. So, which one? shall take precedence because i don't have a lot of time here what, what are they both. again say it again the, the dishwasher is gonna go ahead and take dishwasher precedence. or the ice maker okay so ice here's maker. here's the answer the dishwasher because for marital harmony you can't not have a dishwasher that's just something that needs to be fixed and the ice maker is more easily solved because if you can't fix it you can get a desktop or a countertop ice maker for oh. reasonably cheap and that'll be a stopgap until you can figure out fixing that one. I have or you can have buy ice. ice. Yeah, I was going to say, just go to the market, <laughs> buy some fucking yeah. ice. Um, dishwasher, though, I used to install them. Um, and there's a few tips uh, you can use when buying a new dishwasher. If you get it at Best Buy or whatever, get it on sale, but then ask for an out-of-box or display unit. And usually what, what you may get is there'll be a little scratch on the front of the dishwasher and it'll be discounted like 400 bucks. Okay. But the great thing about dishwashers is you take the side panels off of the door and that sheet in the front is reversible and it's got the opposite color. So if it's black, it's white on the other side. If it's gray, it's a different, it's, you know, it's, it's either, it's a, it's a shade of what black if it's silver or a what shade color? of white. Say it again. I just asking if it was like silver, would it be gold? Uh, I don't think so. I think that the silver ones are just metal. I think that's just Chrome. Uh, but if you, you know, if you've got a white kitchen, like I got a white kitchen, so I got a white dishwasher. Um, but the other side of that thing is black. Um, that's just the finish though but yeah just i don't yeah so i guess i'll i'll work on the dishwasher first um but i oh wait hold hold on a second chris are we talking about replacement or are we talking about you're going to dedicate yourself to trying to repair one of these two it has to be this it has to be the latter at the moment you're going to try to repair a dishwasher good absolutely uh that's the worst that could happen i would say Call the repairman for the dishwasher because there's more moving parts and try to repair the ice maker yourself because you've done that before. So there's at least some optimism that you will have success. I repaired the dishwasher before too. Maybe there's a small chance he's uh, fluent in ice too. And you can say, hey, by the way, can you uh, take a look over at this other guy over here? Fluent in ice. That's right. That's right. I know you speak wash. Do you speak freeze? (laughs) Oh, yes. Thank you, Matt. Um, all right, what do you well, mean you've repaired the dishwasher before? What is that? What does that well, look like? It's not like not nothing electrical, but the the door has a like when you you know when you open a dishwasher door and it could go open at like a forty five degree angle and not fall flat to the floor. Yes. Well, so you loosened a, sc- a couple screws. It what felt, it mine like. felt mine started just just slamming open onto the oh, ground he tightened screws he tightened a couple of screws. and um it wasn't it wasn't as easy as you think there's like a whole weird pulley system in order to make it work and i had to buy mm. replacement parts and i had to install them and then the the door now has a, a okay nice so 
So, so what I'm hearing here is that you you've replaced you've repaired a mechanism for opening and closing. What has yes. happened to the dishwasher this time? I think it's flooding. I got an error code. I have to run diagnostics. I have to I have to run diagnostics. I believe well the error code indicates that its flood basin has been alerted that there could be some possible flooding. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have you to and excess it. water is just a bad combo these days. Dude, I just yeah. I'm yeah, seriously. I I don't know, man. Aquaman. I think when we get into the uh the excess water situation, we gotta start worrying about mold and this has to go to the professionals because you got Benny up in that bitch. And yeah. if you get mold in there that you're not aware of, yeah. that's bad news for you. It you can check it out by yourself. Uh there will be access to the hoses from under your sink and the hoses are just connected by those clamps yeah with like hex screws um so he make sure it's unplugged first make sure it's unplugged first and now then the disconnect the hoses uh make sure there's there's not water in it inside already see if there's a drain feature but you can pull the thing out yeah, without yeah. damaging. You can pull it directly out, and then you can get in there and look. I had to get a, I had to get into the pulley system, and with all this excess water, you'd think I could just freeze some of it, and then problem solved. <sighs> this uh, you're not right. fluent in freeze, Chris. I'm not. So, leave so, that to the professionals. Remember, remember when this room I was in was flooding? Yes, um, yes. I do remember. And you still podcasted. That's the I sacrifice. Still that you and made, Gary, sir. Gary's right. There mm. is a mold scare, oh, especially now that I ironically out, his signal is completely <laughs> frozen. <laughs> Oh, was my signal frozen? Yeah. No. Well, not anymore. Uh, that was a good trick question. Um, I, I, ironically, the the mold issue has posed itself upon me because I have a, a a new kid, and I'm in this room a lot. Like this room was flooding. There's probably mold in here. You gotta check. And I had people come over, and they're like, oh, "I don't think there's mold in here." And they're like taking whiffs of the place. Like it's a little musty, but uh, I think you're fine. To the point where. I had to just hire a mold company to come and check this room and to check for mold in this room was a $650 ticket. Oh my God. That's and like 10 wait, bags of fucking popcorn. Wait, yeah. hold on a second. <laughs> Who are the people that you brought over to just take a whiff? I um, that was that's a, mold a great company. question, actually. <laughs> So George there are mold Miller, removal, professional so sniffers. There are mold removal specialists that would come uh -huh. that I invited to come over for a quote, and they said we don't know for sure if there's mold here, so we don't want to do our thing, and there's Dude, no mold in the wall. Did they come Once in with like with them clothes? into your house? <laughs> Once you invite them into your house, dude, they can come in any time and turn you into vampire. Dude, I know. Exactly. I'm aware. I'm aware, Dawson. Did they come I in? Just seem to let the right one in. Did they have a clothing Love pin on their movie. nose and then say <laughs> that if you if you want them to actually smell here, you're gonna have to pay pay a fee? <laughs> yeah, that yeah, uh, I charge for smells just like uh, not like unlike Jimmy John's who gives out the free smells. Uh, was it is it Jimmy John's? Gary would know. I don't know. Um, you should get down, get down on the floor at a corner and just let a ripper fart. You know, just as silent but deadly. And then yeah. say it's right down there, right down there in that corner. That's where I smell it the most. And then I, watch them as they stick their faces into your cloud of stink. It's a great oh, use for for an estimate. Gotta happen. <laughs> at the Please beginning of Dawson's diatribe, I, I was about to just pop in at the top going, that's the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. But as it kept going, I thought, this is brilliant, and I'm in. And I love it. Um <laughs> so I brought I call I call this guy well so the mold special the removal guys are like we can't check you got to get somebody to check otherwise you're just gonna have to go off speculation and we're looking around we're, t we're taking free whiffs there's no mold in here they're so whiffing on spec they're whiffing on spec and so i actually so i thought it was fine but jenny's like we don't know for sure and i would like to i would like some peace of mind so um which i understand so i call a mold specialist who what they do is they they measure the air in the room and then they measure the air outside and they compare and contrast if one's much moldier than the other, if there's oh some sort God. of weird. You can just say compare. This is such bullshit. No, they also contrast. I don't think they need to Do they, <laughs> they, they actually of contrast? They, they, you know, I'm actually, sure I think that, they contrast I more than they compare. <laughs> if they're contrasting, they're padding the bill. No, they contrast. Because they think... could just simply compare and give you an answer. 
But you're you, pro you're probably paying extra. You bought the Dawson, gold. Dawson, it is six hundred fifty dollars. They better do some contrasting along okay. with the compare. Hey, 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 I'm paying. I want to make sure you guys money. contrast. Yeah. Don't I, just I, compare. I want to see your contrasting notes. As I'm well. paying a lot of money here. So, so they cut. So that it it's one guy or oh, two guys. One guy's training. It's always funny when there's a guy training. Like like when you go to a restaurant, there's just a guy just like hanging back. Yeah, right before they get quiet. out of the truck, like this is how you fleece these suckers. <laughs> <laughs> but look, this is a this is a big ticket item. This this these are scientists basically that are come they're coming in my my household. So they go in, they come in. The this is the worst part. He comes in, he takes a he takes a free whiff and he just goes, There's no there's no mold in here. I'm like, just do the do the test, sir. <laughs> just, do the, just do the test. It's like, all right, but I really don't think there's mold in here, but I'll I'll do the test. He sets up a tripod and he just puts like a little a little uh I don't know, container of, I don't even know what it's filled with, but he just opens it up and just waits for, I don't know, 30 <laughs> seconds. And then he closes it. And then I go, so what now? It's like, oh, we're done. I was like, that's Wait, it? Couldn't we, have just, couldn't we have just sat that on the desk and knocked that price down to about 425? Put it on yeah. a tripod. He needed it on a tripod. It had to be some some specific height. I don't know. And then uh, and then three days later, email. Oh, you know, you're, you know, mold. It's all good. Thanks for paying, though. Oh my god! Yeah. And that oh. was it. And that was so. I don't want. I feel like you guys got grifted. You that think? sounds every part of it sounds like bullshit. Wow. Oh, this measures the mold in the air, and then compared to the air outside, he did keep winking please. at the trainee every, every, yeah. every sentence. Like this will measure the mold. Chris, I mean, you got mold rolled. You yeah. got mold rolled. Oh, that's a bummer. Love it. Um, speak, speaking of uh. I mean, um, I hate it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if this really is mold, but Jen started uh, doing sourdough, uh, nice, trying yeah. to make her own sourdough. So she she got like some mother dough from her coworker, which is already weird. Like I love I love me some sourdough. It's delicious. Oh, but, me too. But having to hear about mother dough, you gotta get a starter. You get the yeah. starter dough, which becomes yeah from the mother dough, and then like. Every night she's just like, "Oh, I gotta go feed it." I'm like, "Feed what?" And she's wow. like, "I gotta go feed. I gotta go feed the, the this jar the bread. in wow. the kitchen right now." And there's just like this jar of just dough that she's just like, literally, it's like a, a adult tamagotchi where she just has to come over just to feed the right. thing and make sure it's doing okay all the time. I was gonna say it's a tamagotchi. It's a tamagotchi for adults, sourdough bread. Right. right. And then, is that um, a little egg that you have to feed every day? And I'll be honest, yeah. yeah, we're feeding it every day. There's a mother dough. I'm starting to become attached. Like I don't know if does I want to eat pee? this thing anymore. Yeah. It's, does it? Dude, is it like doing, Tammy Craps? It's it's taking over. It's taking over my life. We have to get it. We're getting its own room right now. We're going. To so IKEA. Chris, I, I'm sure you know the answer to this because that's how these people are. How old was the mother dough that she got her starter from? I I think it's fairly old because the person who gave it to her is pretty well into the sourdough life mm, it's a I life have, is, is it I a have, cultural a phenomenon it is it's a it's a it's a phenomenon okay Kill i have it. just come to the realization that i have no fucking idea how sourdough bread is made <laughs> <laughs> like what oh. are you talking about kaylin bro you gotta have a starter you just put it in the oven and turn it no, up no to get it oh. to get the tang to you get the sour, it. Kalen. You gotta I'm feed it. Yeah, I am learning a whole world, bunch of things. I'm surprised that you're the one that's asking about sourdough. You I, mean, I don't ask fucking, how the sausage is, is packed. I just eat. You put those sour candies in the dough. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. I see the warheads. Yeah, you, yeah. See, you crush you're warheads. just feeding it warheads. Yeah, we're right. Feeding, <laughs> we should be feeding it more sour things. I like I like an extra sour dough. So, um, yeah, that you you have to you basically have to keep this thing alive and just put a little bit into the dough that you're making at all times. Now, That's what Chris, gives it its sourness. I have you been the benefactor of some fresh sourdough as a result of this? I think about it, and it's hard to top the just having a fresh piece of sourdough bread in front of you that you've just put butter on, and it's still hot from the oven. Yeah, Correct. you can't beat that. There's, there's, there's sourdough I, bread and butter hard. fresh out of the oven, fresh out of the oven, freshly baked, like to yeah. the point where I look at bread in stores and I just think that that's some old ass You're shit. Pathetic. It's old, dude. Like, think about it. They had to make right. it. They had to wrap it. They have to put it on a truck. The truck has to drive. By the time you're getting it, it's, you're basically buying stale bread at the right. grocery store. 
Yeah, nothing. Having the fresh, the fresh bread. It's yeah. I I I I can't think of anything better. And it, so it, is it, Jenny it, just making this bread for you, or has she gotten into like gifting people bread? Look at Gary. He's already trying to get in. I'm no, I'm not. I, I honestly here. was. That's I honestly not. Okay, okay, Gary. All right, we know what you're doing. Oh, you're so uh, you, like, are you gonna eat all the bread? <laughs> Kaylin, I just came up with a great concept for a horror movie. Okay, it's yes. about this guy and his wife. She gets really into baking, and she's just staying up all night. And he's losing sight of what's happening to his wife. And then he finds out that his wife inherited this mother doe from another person. And in fact, it is an ancient evil that is being passed down from generation to generation. I like this. Boom. The mother doe. The mother doe. I think that's one of the next uh, VHS movies that's supposed to come out. (laughs) VHS doe. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, I, Gary's I'm, not amused, but I want, no. I mean, you want me to yes and that? What do you want from me? Have your fun. So, I'm not so going to stop you. So this dough is butter cursed. me up, Gary. I like this this uh, this dough top. Yeah. And, this and, dough is and the sequel is going to be called uh, Mother's Dose. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Making some yeah. bolillos, bread uh, alive. Oh. <laughs> We're going to have it. some flan. The better off bread. Alive. There you go. Bread or alive, yeah. <laughs> bread off bread's good too. Oh man, there's so many. Yeah, the everybody put in, your, put in your evil tag bread. lines for mother for mother dose, <laughs> um, in the Facebook group because I want to I want to hear them. All right, let's speaking of the Facebook group and uh, and comments. Let's do some comments. All righty, and these are all are all um listener comments or what do you call them comments? Uh, found online now we're going to start with the patreon page first because we put our episodes up ad free on patreon if you subscribe it's five bucks a month minimum it's it's less than a cold brew cup of coffee that kaylin gets from starbucks from starbucks and um yeah and we also do an extra episode a week we did we have different tiers we could do we uh, we do meetups you understand for five months you could get one bag of caramel corn from the boy (laughs) scouts of america five months subscription yeah that's 25 episodes by the way and chris you you alluded to some of the other tiers one of which is a movie club where we all watch a movie and then uh we talk about it Uh, are you announcing i am announcing we are wonder what movie we're gonna watch we are unfortunately going to have to dive right into the middle because it's the only one on netflix but London has fallen. <laughs> London has okay. fallen. That's what we do for the next movie club. So yeah, so that's the time for, for Halloween. For that Halloween feature. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's goddamn right, Caitlin. You know, I Matt's gonna come calendar. back. <laughs> Matt's gonna come back with Dude. a vengeance. When Matt, know, when Matt gets Halloween, is. I'm. Yeah. I'm a... No, but no, Matt is going to. He doesn't need Halloween. When Matt gets December, it's gonna be a fucking horror film. <laughs> Uh, actually, I think I had December a couple years ago, and I did like some <laughs> some Hallmark made yeah, for TV don't. movie, like Christmas with You. Don't uh, I no. think it was a Freddie Prince Jr. abomination? <laughs> Matt's gonna uh, end with our luck. Matt's gonna end with February, and we're gonna get stuck watching a fucking Hallmark dude, movie. Valentine's Day. It's cool. I know. Count me in. Count me in. Um, yeah, the it the day that Matt gets October. It's good. Yeah, yeah the, year Matt, the year Matt gets October. Will I be, was curious will be what the worst we watched of our lives. What we watched last October because I remember being very, very upset about it. And I looked and last October it was eight. It was eight mile, and I remember being like, <laughs> "God damn it!" <laughs> like Halloween fucking night, I had to fucking watch eight mile. I was very upset. Oh, Thank you, you for announcing thing. it earlier. You poor thing, that fucking amazing film that everyone <laughs> reveres, but just because he fell on the wrong day. Oh, yeah. I know. Matt, he's a seasonal guy. It's fun to ween. I get it. That's right. um, so let's go to our Patreon comments here. David, Matt, Mammoth, Mammoth, 69 Smith says, Sup, Scuttlebutts. Sup. Sup. Don Powell, he writes, I hate dressing up for Halloween. I've been pressured into it at work a few times in the past 10 to 15 years, and I always feel stupid and embarrassed. It's kind of like the feeling you get in the no pants to school dreams. Hearing grownups talk about having fun dressing up is weird to me. <laughs> Don, I get it, but don't be stu- don't feel stupid or embarrassed because if you think about it, when you see other people in costumes, you don't really think they're stupid or embarrassing. You're like, fine. It's fine. I hope you don't. 
Like it's it's Halloween. It's totally appropriate. So go you dress up, lean into it. I think you'll be okay. Don, I want you to also take a look at yourself in the mirror and think mm-hmm. about every day you put on that suit and tie. And is mm-hmm. that really you? Or isn't that just a costume? And aren't we all just wearing costumes every day of the week? And why should Halloween be any different? Right. I agree. So in a way, <laughs> you kind of have to take off your mask to put on a That's mask. Right. That's absolutely right. Take off the costume, get undressed, and put on. You know what? Why don't we Don all get Powell. undressed right now? Everyone who's Let's listening. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's Everybody funny you say it. that, Matt, because <laughs> I have recently been changing, radically changing what I wear to work, and I definitely feel like I'm sort of wearing a costume. Oh, yeah? What That's you, right. You, gotta, you, you can't wear flip-flops in court. I am not wearing flip-flops in court. That is can, can confirm that is not acceptable. How is court going? I feel like somebody in the Facebook – I'm sorry. I don't want to hijack the show, but I feel like someone in the Facebook group That's also just... asked about this. Uh, well, let's see if we get there. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's late here. I've cool. had a lot Anyways, of wine. I'm sorry. Don, con- Don continues his comment saying, hey, Gary, also, what's going on with court and how are you dressing for it? <laughs> <laughs> so, a weirdly appropriate timing, Don. Uh, you know, uh, court's been interesting for sure. Um, I, you know, I'm, I think I can speak for all of us here when I say I've spent very limited time in courtrooms in my life. And uh, now I've I've spent definitely a lot more in the last two weeks than I have in my entire life combined. I'm not exactly sure how much I can talk about publicly. So I will say that I am wearing basically a suit without the tie. And uh, it's it's been interesting. And I believe mark said that we might be talking about it this weekend on reasonable doubt so uh if you want to hear anything more uh it was not about the plug chris it was about uh, the that is a forum where i will feel comfortable talking about it because i'm not exactly sure what i'm allowed to say but if mark is leading the discussion or guiding me in the discussion i will feel much more free to discuss it as opposed Uh, to the five of us Right, and uh, we, would, so we would subscribe to the plug for Reasonable, Reasonable Doubt, Doubt YouTube yeah. and Reasonable Doubt podcast. Well done. Um, I mean, interested? I'm not. Whatever. <laughs> no, I love. No, it. I'm. 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 I understand that, but yeah. it is a great plug. I yeah. um. What do you guys do for lunch? What's the lunch? What's the lunch situation like when you're? You got a lot oh, downtown. That's that's a very interesting thing that you said there, Chris. I have. So Matt. And well, for all of us, we have spoken at length about the the grand place in downtown Los Angeles that is Grand Central Market. Yep. And on the first day of court, I was thinking this very thing, Chris, about where should I go for lunch? And I looked it up and Grand Central Market is walkable and only in about 10 minutes. And I get 90 minutes for lunch. And I decided Grand Central Market is going to be my cafeteria. I will make <laughs> my food court. Every day, I've been there zero times. I have oh, worked what? over bums. I have worked straight through lunch every single <laughs> freaking day. Oh, no. And then there have also been a couple of half days, including today, where the, our day is just kind of over when lunch starts. And you know, I I gotta get gotta back. Be to traffic. I, no, no, I'm not. Yeah, right. I'm not going home. I'm going oh. to the office. <laughs> uh, so uh, so it's been. Um, incredibly incredibly busy for me uh sort of what i've experienced what i've realized is that when we're in trial that consumes everything so i just have absolutely not had time to eat lunch a single day since we started so um one day one day i'm hoping that i will uh not get an assignment and i will mosey on over to grand central but where are you uh, gonna go what's gonna be your what's your first choice what are you jonesing for um you know, we're just going to have to see what how I feel on the day because there's so many places over there that I love. I mean, we've talked about Wexler's, which is, you know, a poor man's langers, but so good. Um, no, there's a For the Win, which is a smash burger place over there that's really good. There's a um, a great sushi place. There's a great sandwich spot. So I, I don't know. I think we're just going to have to sort of see what strikes my fancy that day. That is, that is something that I was a little concerned about, Matt, is uh, the paralysis of getting over there and just wandering around. Every time I go there, I like wander for like 15 minutes trying to decide what, what's going to be best and what's not going to leave me disappointed that I didn't choose something else. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, we'll see. I'll well, keep you posted. Wexler's is the correct answer, by the way. Yeah. That's... I think that's, that's definitely probably up there unless for some reason I, think and this is possible that eating a giant pastrami sandwich and then going back into court might make me fall asleep in front of the judge uh, that is, would that is 
a legitimate concern. What's a peak courtroom movie or sports movie, according to Matt? Is it, is it, <laughs> um, and and how many liar liar references are you are you throwing out there? Yeah. Liar liar is a good one. I think a few good men has to be in the in the combo. Um, liar liar is pretty good. Yeah, because when I think of when I think of you getting lunch there, Gary, I I was really hoping that. You go, maybe there's, there's, I'm thinking maybe this is jury dude, but you go, there's like a local food truck. Everybody goes over there. You look, you look over at the opposing team, the opposing group, and you know, you share some witty repartee. Everybody about, snarls at each other. You guys other. are friends, but you know, and you're sharing some yeah. witty conversation, but at the, uh, underlying, you, you hate the, you hate them. But nice uh, cross at the MacGyver trial, sh- Earl. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know Judge if Malikin but, thinks you're a piece of shit. See, I don't, yeah, I don't know if that would necessarily uh, happen out in public because there is the very real um, concern of is there are there jury members around. But I will say it's been very interesting to see how cordial everyone on both sides is when it's just the teams and the judge and the court staff and how quickly that relationship goes out the window as soon as the jury is present. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because they, they have a a point of view that they have to establish so you can't yeah you can't show but, I mean, weakness people when when it's just the uh the court and legal professionals uh the other side is down downright cordial with me like they're nice people yeah and that's that's been surprising and very interesting they're trying to poach you maybe um, oh and also pete courtroom movies definitely my cousin Vinny. yes oh, that's also go. also correct <laughs> yeah. never Good seen call. that Oh, I, by the way, Kalen, I will wow. say that several people that I've spoken to have said that you ask any defense attorney and they will tell you that my cousin Vinny is the most uh, actual, oh, really? most accurate courtroom movie that there is. Really? Not like yeah. that. <laughs> no, not Liar Great Liar. Movie. Oh, hmm. I've had I've had courtrooms all wrong. Um, let's see. Joe Cool says, Chris, a Sandlot themed Halloween costumes, Squints, Wendy and Benny the Jet. I love it. It might be funnier if I had Wendy, um, <laughs> but I, I dig it. I dig it. I love a good family costume. Uh, let's see. Philip Anderson says his favorite Halloween costume was uh, ap- was Brett Favre after the Jen Sturger incident. Mm. So that one, and he is, he tells a whole story that's, there. That's a not safe for work one. NSFW for sure. Man, everybody put in the. Did we ask people to put in their Halloween costumes? Because we got a lot of comments about, about <laughs> Halloween ideas. And I don't remember. Do, I don't remember diving in that deep. I don't remember doing that. Um, Peter Morris says we always dress up for work at Halloween. Since I've spent all damn year sewing, I figured I might as well wear my Renaissance Fair clothes. Is that a cop out, Peter? Yes, it is. But go ahead and do it, um, just because you have it ready. You know, it will be a cop. It will be noticeable because yours is our, your Renaissance clothes are probably all worn out and um because you've, you've worn so many places but do it because it's fun you could you could do what my friend did and put on like his uh nhl jersey that he always had and then just put zombie makeup on and then he was like a zombie nhl player i so love be like a zombie medieval zombie Knight blank yeah. yeah the um yeah I, I agree that's a good that's a good idea uh let's see here duck guy 69 says gotta weigh in on the anchovy stock chris you're correct sardines and a can are better than canned anchovies um, but my favorite pizza, which I barely get because my wife can't stand the smell is pepperoni, pineapple, jalapeno, and anchovies. All on one fucking pizza? On uh, one pie. And you know what? Oh boy. Duck I have guy? heard pineapple and anchovies apparently quite the combo. Is it? I can see Ugh. that. You have the sweet and the salty. It's like kettle corn. Matt loves kettle corn. You would like this, Matt. Um, yeah, duck guy. I'm all in, baby. Let's have pizza together. You're buying. Uh, movie Junkie. <laughs> um, SLC. Always providing the food. <laughs> um, movie Junkie says, the first time I was in the Philippines 20 years ago, for $10, I'd get my hair cut, hot scented towel on my face with straightened shave and shoulder and upper back massage. I miss the Philippines. And then he also talks about working at pizza places and, um, yeah, and anchovies. Uh, they would play rock, paper, scissors for whoever had to put the anchovies on the ward- pizza orders. So... Not for movie junkie. Dawson and Gary, where do you guys fall in the anchovies? You guys, I already know they both don't like them. Maybe Dawson. Like Gary definitely them. doesn't like them. I've yeah, never Gary. tried them, but I assume I don't like them. Um, would you? Would you try? That's good. That's good. Because I've never tried it, but I want to try it. Yes, Kaylin, I would because I there are several things in my life that when you met me, I was staunchly against that I have was one of them. Un- 
a complete 180 on. So I'm okay. at a point in my life where I am willing to try almost anything once because so many things that I absolutely hated. I mean, there was a restaurant that Matt and I used to go to two to three times a week. And my nickname at that place was no onions. Like I would walk in and go, <laughs> hey, no onions. And like now I've come to a point where I absolutely love onions. So mm-hmm. I, you know, there are enough things I've done a complete 180 on that mm-hmm. I'm does burritos, by the way. Yeah, and it was Sin Boya was what they call me, but whatever. Sin Boya. Yep, remember that? I sure do. Sin Boya. I love anchovies in a jar on a cracker. Oh, they're fucking great. Mm. See, you eat a jar? What what kind of cracker? Like a Triscuit. Oh, okay. It's got to have some meat on it here. Yeah. Can't just eat your average water cracker. I don't know if anchovies are pretty good. Sardines, I do not like sardines. See, I think that's where I fucked up. Anchovies, I thought they were, thought I bought they were the same sardines thing. Sardines, yeah. thinking hey, well, they were anchovies. That's what I did. Like, that's why do what I, I fucking did. hate these? Uh, they're both awesome. Terrible for my gout, but both both awesome. Um, hmm. Oh, Peter Morrow, he also, he also talked about he spent all damn year sewing. I've I've been sewing buttons on my clothes because um, I've been keeping all the clothes where the buttons broke off, like in the washer and stuff, and. Uh, Man, what a what what a fulfilling task! <laughs> what a great that use is, of your time is uh, is sewing on a button. Oh my um, god! Yeah, I I I've it's a it's a life skill now that I'll take take with me forever. Um, all right, and those are. Uh, Can I weigh in on one comment that I thought I saw, but from last well, week? It might have been from. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh uh, well, you guys were you guys were talking about reading off comments where everyone was giving us different prison nicknames. And oh yeah. Somebody gave me Esquire, and you guys couldn't quite figure that one out, and I was sitting there shouting in my car. Because you like Esquire magazine. Yeah, that was what you guys were saying. But no, that's a fucking lawyer reference. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter, because now you're Sin Saboya. So. I am. That's right. <laughs> Sin Saboya. That's fucking fine with me. I love that nickname. It's fucking fine with me, Matt. Hell yeah. Sin Saboya. That is a pretty solid nickname. I agree. <laughs> Don't Anyways. fuck with him, man. That's Sid Zaboya. <laughs> you know what? I don't think many people would fuck with me. <laughs> no, fuck no. Yeah. Sid Zaboya sounds pretty badass still. Um, <laughs> all right. That bitch just sounds like he never cries. Um, <laughs> yeah, like if, if you're in prison and you met a Sid Zaboya, it's like, yeah, because he's never cried. <laughs> all right. Well, That's anyway. So um good. Those are our comments, everybody. Thanks for writing in. We appreciate it. We'll do some Facebook ooh, ones ooh, next ooh, next week ooh, if I want to hit some of the, the Oh, Patreon those were all Patreon. Wow. They, we got a lot of we got a lot of Patreon subscribers, Matt, believe it or not. We got and we got uh we got a, a really, really great uh listener base here. And we, we appreciate all of you. Now, uh, why don't we go around the horn, get our plugs in and we'll GTFO and get started with the Patreon recording. So Matt, I will start with you, Mr. What uh what can we do for you? Oh, well, please check out our Patreon if you want to hear the uh, next part of our show, because I'm assuming we got a flick in. I got a mm-hmm. Shay, and uh, hopefully some uh, shit I did as a kid. We got it all for yeah, y'all. Maybe we'll do some like horror maybe. movie talk too. Maybe not. Oh, we will. Don't worry. Yeah. Some top five. Right. It's it is October. Um, love it. Rocktober, bro. It's Rocktober. Right. That's right. Throw Guac- the whole Guactober. I miss it, Guactober. It it's Talktober as well. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. Yeah. Fondle Wayne and Fondle Wayne. Which tober? Which tober are you guys bro. in? You're, Dawson's in Rocktober. Matt, which one are you? What are you in? You're in uh, probably Crocktober. Crocktober, which is more, of a, more of an insider uh, thing, but yeah, yeah, do an inside joke one. It's fine. Um, Gary, what 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 tober are you in? Fallen Tober. Fallen Tober. <laughs> Kalen's in Socktober. <laughs> and I'm in Talktober because we're on a podcast. All right. Oh. Um. Let's uh. uh let's go to Kalen. Kalen, what can we plug for you? Uh, just fooling about podcast. We're uh, mm-hmm. going strong. Got some really good actors coming up uh, in the next uh, two to three weeks here. So they dish a little. Uh, they dish a little bit. So like who? Who you got? Who you got? Yeah, dish. Well, yeah, I'll say dish? that uh, we have one actor from Aliens that was on this week, and in two weeks we will have another actor that was on Aliens, and he was also in some very very big. Um, movies and has a lot to say about some very high profile actors i can't believe you booked the predator i know <laughs> after the alien vs predator he's been wanting to talk some shit so yeah he's finally gonna get to tell his side 
Yeah. Yeah, first the alien came into the studio and then the I know you had the xenomorph on. I remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember it well. He right, burned right. a couple microphones. <laughs> Dawson, what about you? Uh I got nothing, man. Just uh enjoy your life and be good to each other. Nice. All right, dig it. That's a good. That's a good plug, nonetheless. That's an old school Kalen. Don't worry about me. That's I know. That I was. I miss I miss Kalen not having a plug. I'm proud of him for having a plug, but I also yeah. miss miss when he didn't. It still irks me. It gives me the icks, the ick, as the as the kids say. Uh, Gary, what about you? Uh, well, check out our Patreon, patreoncom slash watercooler and uh, apparently I already plugged my other show. So uh... oh, I'm kid. Go listen to no, Reasonable no. Doubt. Watch I London has was... fallen. Watch London has fallen. I wasn't. I was. Doss, I don't <laughs> compliment that it was a fucking legitimately good plug. Made me think like I was all set. I didn't need to do it again. So I wasn't. I, oh, that wasn't what was me. I know. I and the reason why Guys, is Gary don't need to, plug free my... to talk more about what he does in court when Mark Garagos is there. So that's yeah. why you have to listen to Reasonable Doubt. Oh, there what a plug! See? There, Thank you guys. look, look at Gary. Look how Gary finagled Dawson to do his plug. It's 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 did beautiful well, stuff. Though. That's the thing. It's beautiful stuff. So everybody, go to Reasonable Doubt, subscribe to the YouTube, watch the this next episode, and in the comments, um, write "Scene Saboya" or how much you love "Scene Saboya." <laughs> Please don't do that. Yeah, confused. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> yeah. Mark's gonna text me like, "What the fuck is going on?" Please don't do that. <laughs> Actually, I don't care. Do it. It's pretty funny, but Mark is gonna be really fucking confused. Everybody, go confuse Mark Aragus and just comment about uh, "Scene Saboya" and how much you love him. Um, <laughs> I uh, heard he doesn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys, asked, he texts me every <laughs> comment. This is gonna fucking destroy my phone battery. I love it. It's oh, this is this is gonna be great. This might be our new game. And then um, uh, as as for me, my band's playing at Tantalum in Long Beach, October twenty sixth, and uh, come in costume. 16th. Oh yeah, for come in costume, come in costume. Um, and, uh, and we'll have some fun. All right. Well, anyway, thanks again for every, everybody for listening to this show. And we'll see you later. Speak for Patreon. We love you. Goodbye. Woo, 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 woo. Recording has right. stopped.